franchising friends and family, Katherine Monson here. This video is titled, How to Be Your Own Cheerleader. No doubt, over your life, you've heard some well-meaning but flat phrase like, chin up or be happy, and just know that this video is not about that. Now, that being said, it is important to know that positivity and encouraging language absolutely have a positive psychological effect on everybody. According to the Mayo Clinic, positive thoughts hold a myriad of positive benefits to each and every one of us, including increased lifespan, decreased rates of depression, decreased rates of distress, greater resistance to the common cold and flu, even better cardiovascular health. So that sounds pretty darn good, doesn't it? Of course, positivity isn't as straightforward as throwing out some glass half full phrases and seeing whether they stick. For many, positive self-talk is a level 14 skill and we're still on level two, trying to deal with that nasty inner voice that seems to think we can't get anything quite right. It's that voice that whispers, you're a fraud, after you get the big promotion. It screams, I know you couldn't do that, when you falter on a big project. It laughs at you when those anxious feelings creep in because you stopped your exercise or healthy eating routine. That inner voice is absolutely one of our biggest obstacles. To be our own biggest fan, our own cheerleader, we've got to first deal with that angry fan who must be politely escorted out of the stadium in our mind. The important thing here is to note that we're not trying to silence that critic or permanently rid ourselves of that critic because that may not be possible. But what we're going to do is find a way to deal with it that works, that helps us be more positive. The goal is to take away the power, to take away the microphone from that negative inner voice and to free up the real estate in our own minds. So here are some ways we might do that. They certainly work for me. Number one, notice and name that critical negative inner voice. Have you ever stopped and thought, I'm really angry right now. And just the simple thought of acknowledging that made you feel less angry. Well, the same concept applies here. Just by noticing when we're giving real estate in our mind to our inner critic, when we do that, we actually reduce its power. So let's give it a name. That name can be anything. Esmeralda, Fritz, Becca, Colton, doesn't matter. It's whatever you like. The goal is to make it a habitual thing to notice and point the finger at your inner critic as soon as it flares up. The name allows us to disassociate the thoughts from ourselves. I didn't think this, Esmeralda thought this. Number two, gain perspective of that conversation you're having with Esmeralda. There are four types of negative self-talk and pinpointing what type of negative self-talk it is really allows us to gain perspective and gain ground in our own reality. Just by identifying and categorizing the type of thought, we can choose to then let that thought go and give power to other more positive thoughts. So here's one of the four types of negative thoughts. Filtering. This is when something good happens and Esmeralda filters out every positive aspect of the situation until we're left with some mutant view of the situation. Another negative type of thought, catastrophizing. This is when you're living in the worst case scenario in your mind. For example, you forgot to go to the store last night and you're out of breakfast food and you either have to skip breakfast altogether or make time to stop on the way to work to grab some breakfast, which will make you late. So Esmeralda decides that this one act will ruin your entire day and when you give Esmeralda that power, that catastrophic thought becomes prophetic. Personalizing is a third kind of negative thought process. Something bad happens and you immediately assume it's because of you. Maybe a project was canceled because of funding, but Esmeralda decides it was because you failed to deliver. 
This is an ego response. And the last kind of negative thought is polarizing. You let Esmeralda color your vision in the black and white extremes. Something is either good or bad and there's no in between. Maybe your friend canceled dinner because she's dealing with her own Esmeralda and needed some self-care time. That isn't about you and it's not really good or bad as it pertains to you, it's simply what is. Third idea, track the conversations. After gaining perspective and context to your negative self-talk, record it, write it down, make a note. You could do this by meditating or journaling or saying it out loud. The goal isn't to write or meditate about the nasty things that Esmeralda said to you today. Rather, it's a log to keep track of your wins when you identified Esmeralda's voice and then took the power away. Now you have a record of every time you noticed Esmeralda, gained some perspective and gave a different thought, a more positive thought, the power and the real estate in your mind. Fourth idea, form an alliance. It is absolutely hard for many people to celebrate themselves. It's hard to acknowledge our own personal wins without letting Esmeralda creep in to throw some shade on our party. So another tactic is to name your inner fan just as you named your inner critic. So name that inner fan and then imagine what that inner fan looks like. Imagine what that inner fan sounds like. Sometimes it's easier to receive a compliment from a friend than it is to compliment yourself. So that's where, well, we're gonna call my inner fan Natalie. That's where Natalie comes in. Now, every time Esmeralda starts to rear her head, invite Natalie over to filter in some positive thoughts. For example, you just landed a big promotion. Use steps one through three to disassociate with Esmeralda, who might be saying, well, you didn't really deserve that promotion. You're a fake, you're a fraud. And then ask Natalie to identify three positives to focus on. I've really been doing very well at work. I really did a fantastic job on those three projects and I've mentored a coworker. Those are positive things Natalie can tell you about. Now you might feel silly trying this strategy but I would give it a try just to see if it works. What's most important is that you're making positive self-talk a priority and working through various strategies until you find one that works for you. It is absolutely worth a try, at least for a week. So try naming that inner critic and that positive inner fan, give them two separate names and try it for a week and see if it helps you listen to that positive inner voice. Why? Because positive thoughts hold a myriad of benefits, including longer lifespan, decreased depression, greater resistance to cold and flu, and who doesn't want all of that? Thank you.